What, what I definitely have experienced in treating people is that there isn't one method that works and there isn't one way that works for every single person. So in that sense, many people who might be envisioning in the, this in the West might find that they might take medications for a long period of time and maybe they worked in the beginning but they're not working anymore. So the object was perhaps we can create a place where we can use many different techniques, not just a pharmaceutical approach, not just a surgical approach, not just the traditional approaches that we know, but the possibility of bringing together the best of every possible world, whether it's the East and the West, whether it's Africa, Asia, the United States. It was to get everything into one place to see that people can now begin to work with us to customize their own treatment and find something that they know works for them. And I have to, I have to say that putting this back into the patient's hands allows them to feel that they are part of the process of healing themselves. If this does not happen, and the person does not go through the process of healing themselves, they may never know that they are healed. And the object of using a device like the core technology is that since we have already gotten to the pattern of using medications repeatedly over and over again, and we want this safety and these protocols and these regulations, one thing I've definitely noticed is that the safer we become, and the more fearful we become of, he of healing, the more freedom we give up. And you can see this in the West. They're giving up every single one of their freedoms in order to have more and more safety because of this fear. And in medicine, we needed to have a place where we could go to this place where there could be fear, and this device takes us there with the safety without having to give up the freedom. And that's the reason why I think that this device is central and is going to be central to all healing in the world someday, this technology. And, and also I want to add that the core technology is basically to create a liability, a dynamic lab in equilibrium in the patient. And there's two major uh, ways with the core. One is the energetic one and one is the informational one. And, and no other system makes it so clear that these are two different but complementary um, uh, roads to create what the dynamic label equilibrium. Basically, when we do frequency therapy, we are not shooting down viruses <laughs> like most rife technicians <laughs> consider to be the case in their healing. No, we are creating an alternation, and this is really the, the basic principle behind the yin and yang. Is a sinus wave that basically triggers an alternation from plus to minus, from, from high to low, on an energetic level. And this is the function of all frequency therapy. If we use this, this magnetic applicators, or <clears throat> with the electric applicators, or with light applicators like the LED infrared applicator or plasma generator. It's always the same principle to create a, um, an energetic alternation between light and darkness, between um, energetic electric field or magnetic field plus and minus. And this basically gives an impulse, an awakening impulse to the whole energetic system. So it's not about killing something uh, an invader like the allopathic approach that's still the common way to explain frequency therapy in holistic circles but it's to create a, a dynamic level equilibrium and and also this allows us not as we, we, we uh, Richard said it's, we are not having to oppose for example pharmaceutical industry because if you use the right substances you can create also dynamic level equilibrium on a biochemical way. We just talked about it at lunch, for example, taking Lipitor, alternating with omega-6 fatty acids, you create a fatty impulse alternating with something that reduces the fat. And so the same is with, um, with liver cleanse, giving oil and alternating with, um, with acids. So you create an alternation. This is always 
the healing impulse, <clears throat> like heat and cold, hot and cold showers, is a, is a creating a dynamic lava equilibrium that sets the healing impulse. It's not doing the healing, but that is just like taking a rest, sitting down, not thinking, and then going back into the world and, and working with the mind and with activity. If this is not there, there is no life. The same is with spiritual uh, work. If you only sit in a cave and meditate, you will die sooner and better sooner than later. But if you do this and meditate possibly even many times a day for half an hour or even five minutes or one minute or half a minute and alternate this with, with openness for the outside, then you are alive. This is really about bringing not only health, physical health, but also spiritual health to people. It's always the same principle, the dynamic level equilibrium. So, just in case you don't want to go through a near-death experience, because this is the ultimate labializing event that you can have. It's the ultimate reset you can have, and not everybody needs to go to this extent. You can, and you can, you can take a device like this and make a lot of analogies. But what I would say with a device like this as a physician who has seen all of these different remedies that have been coming to an institution where they're all evaluated, one thing I see about this device is that Dr. Schmidt could have taken this device and said, oh, I've discovered something so amazing that I'm going to sit up in a little mountain uh, cabin by myself on the internet and I'm just going to have people around the world send me their information so I could help them from a distance and just stay in my little cabin and never go out to the world. But what is he's doing is he's decided, I have this, and in order to make some change in me and the world, I'm going to go out into the world, I'm going to teach people to understand this state. Because if there is no... If you think about this healing state where this person is held here, this is a state in which there is routine and there is safety, and you can identify with everything that's happening to you with your pain and your illness. But if you stay there where you're identifying with your illness, you will become your illness. In other words, if I could pose one question to anybody who's listening, would you really be on this planet if there wasn't a challenge to live? And, and that's what this is about, creating that challenge. The challenge, and we don't have to create the challenge. <laughs> Luckily for us, there's enough challenges. But the challenge for us is not to oppose the challenge as like a, a deadly enemy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's really, it's really very spiritual already. But it, here it becomes very practical. If we can go under a cold shower not thinking it's the devil, but just take it as cold water and then go back in, the, in under the hot shower and then take this as the hot shower, and don't now prefer one body temperature shower that's not alternating at all, then we are, then we are more healthy. And this goes to into, into everything. If we say, well, I think I'm perfectly healthy, but if, if somebody gives me a piece of, piece of steak, you won't be able to, to have me around for the next week because I'm sick then it means you are sick. If you cannot be open for change, if you cannot have maybe <clears throat> once in a while a food that's not 100% organic or not, not from always the same place where you're used to, this means being open really for new possibilities and open for change. And <clears throat> when we have this idea, not only as an idea, but as something that we practice, and we have a, this something like the core system, that actually points out to us where is our um, the dynamic level equilibrium, the polarities that we have to become aware of and integrate in our life, and we are open to this and allow it to happen, then actually life is not losing its disharmony, it's actually probably increasing, but we can live with those polarities much, much better.